if you've been looking for permission to say no and be selfish sometimes and put yourself first and not be guilty about it, here it is. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm April, founder and creator of Lena's Pearls. This subject today that we're going to discuss is quite personal for me and we'll get into some examples as to why. But I found that uh, we are constantly running. We're running a little too hard for too many and it's draining the life out of us. And we're starting to wonder why it's an epidemic of being tired all the time. And although though there's many factors in that, one of the main things that is causing us to be so tired and drained is because we are having the hardest time, some of us, learning to simply say no. I am so serious about this subject, pardon me, that I actually have notes on this. So we're gonna get into some of the reasons why we are having such a hard time saying no and how to remedy that and why we actually should and we really truly need to take some time for ourselves and learn no is not a curse word. It is not profane in any way, and you'll learn after this video that it's actually quite beneficial and it's quite freeing. <laughs> the first reason is that we actually have a hard time saying no is we are conditioned to put others first. That is one of the number one reasons for many of our issues, hurts, disappointments, and stresses in our lives is we really truly are many of us and the givers and and the nurturers of this world and and some of us you know we just we just naturally want everyone else to be okay we feel like we'll get to it we'll get to ourselves we'll get to that important task that we have to do we'll eventually get to it and everybody else you know as long as they're okay you know we're okay we always feel like you know it's better to give than receive and and all of that we also number two is we want to be helpful. Um, some of us just have that, they're, that are very blessed with that, that giving spirit in them. And they just, that is their strong, one of their strongest characteristics and makes them a really good person, honestly, is they want to be helpful. They want to be the person that you go to. The third reason, and these are some of the top reasons, these aren't the, all, of the, all of the reasons, but these are some of the main core reasons why we have such a hard time saying no and have a hard time being selfish with our time and ourselves. Um, number three is we want to be dependable and reliant. We want to come across and, and be known to be dependable and reliant. Some people truly do need to feel that way, to feel like the go-to person because it's fulfilling for them. Some people actually gain energy and life and, and, and purpose in being dependable and reliant and the go-to. Number four, some of us, we have a sense of wanting to feel needed, wanting to be involved, and we naturally do care about those people in our lives. And we feel sometimes just getting them to that appointment and you know picking them up from that issue or taking them shopping or whatever it is that they call us to do making sure they get back and forth to that job and all of that that is our way of supporting and helping them number five is we not only do we take on our own guilt and feelings of guilt but we allow others to do it to us as well when we can't be there for them, when we aren't the reliable person, when we really should say no, they end up guilt tripping us. So, we're, what it, what, and those are like my top fives. This lends itself to the age old saying that if you don't take care of you, there will be nothing left to take care of anyone else. If you constantly are letting your tasks go, if you're constantly getting drained and pulled from 50 million directions and running and running and running, and we as a society are just running, and a lot of times we're just, we're running for everything but for things that we need to run for ourselves. And if you continue to allow people to use you up and sometimes they even tap into your reserves, there is going to be nothing left for them anyway. 
And for all of those wonderful qualities that you have that makes you that nurturing, giving, reliable, dependable, dependable person, you won't have anything left anyway to be those things. So they won't be able to rely on you and you really will seek your, um, sulk yourself down into a depression about this. Um, I want to get into the core reasons why, and I, these are in no specific order. Um, and neither were the previous ones of, you know, why we tend to do this and why we have such a hard time saying no and being selfish. But these are some of the, the reasons that is so important to start learning to say no and learn that no is not a curse word. It is okay. It is okay to say no. I am giving you permission to say no. <laughs> and we'll get into the, the variations. If you need some help, I'm here to help you and I will give you some variations on exactly how you can actually form the words no. <laughs> the word no. So here's some of, this is where I have some of my notes. So excuse me ahead of time if I'm looking down. But I, these are just some core things that I really, truly um, want to resonate with you today and, and help and, and prayerfully, it's going to help deliver somebody. OK, and that's what it's all about. So. It does not mean when you say no, it doesn't mean to everything. It doesn't mean to every opportunity, just those things that you know that you simply just cannot. And it's OK, because. What that leads itself into is my next point that I have written down here is you'll sometimes when you start getting that knot in your feeling, that gut feeling, or when you see their text, when you see when you see they're calling you, when you see the missed call, when you see that there's a voicemail from them, when you see them knocking on the door, um, when you see them coming towards you, if you work with them or whatever the case is, when you start getting that knot in your stomach sometimes and that, I don't feel like anything, you know what that is. That is your subconscious subliminally warning you that you are at your max and that this person is draining you and you're not going to be bright eyed and bushy tail for everybody that you, that's in your circle. There's just people that just annoy you for many reasons that have nothing to do with this. But this is taught, I'm, what I'm specifically, you know, gearing this toward is those people that are using you up and listen. It's not always friends. Sometimes it's, it's that family member. It's that person that lives in your house. And some of them people, y'all need to get up out your house too. And that's a whole nother video, but it's your children. It's your significant other. Um, it could be the, someone that you're actually, that's, um, that you're responsible for their care. You know, it's not always, you know, the friend that needs a ride back and forth and what have you, and is using you as an Uber. OK, so that is your subconscious. You have to start listening to yourself, listening to your. Remember, we talked about in the previous video that I just my very first video, you know, as far as um, stop doubting your emotions. You know, when you get these triggers and these these knots and these little tingles and, and these little it's it's your body and it's, it's telling you, it's warning you. Pay attention. I am. You're about to tap out. You can't you cannot bring on any more burdens right now. Another point, sorry again for looking down, is you need to do it for them because you need, once you cut this cord of dependability on you for every little thing, it forces them into their own resourcefulness. And that is so key, especially mothers with your children. You have to let them learn to rely on themselves because when you leave this earth, if all they've ever known is to come run to you, what exactly are you giving them? What seed are you planting in them? You have to start and, and, and that's anybody. If it's a really good friend of yours that you care a lot about, what good, what, how you feel like you're being a great friend and a wonderful parent because you are there for them. You're always there for them. If they need you, you're there. And yes, as a parent and a great friend and a, and a great coworker and whatever the scenario is that you're in with this, that you need to be released from. Yes. You know, that does make you feel like running for them makes you, you know, um, is helpful to them. But it's really not after a while. It really isn't. Even when you're taking care of somebody and I really want to get into this. So many of us are caregivers. So many of us have older parents. Um, spouses, 
you know, we were home health aides, <laughs> nurses, doctors. And, you know, if we're able to and we're blessed to, we're able to be home with these, you know, these individuals that we love and care about. And we want to be there for every moment. Um, you sometimes need a break, too, and it's okay. And don't feel guilty about it. If you don't take the time, what are you really giving them? How are you, what percentage of you and your presence is devoted to them anyway? If you're dead on your feet, you have to give yourself permission to be selfish. And a lot of times it's not necessarily selfishness, it's self-preservation. And it's better for them in the long run and I'm speaking still to the caregivers over the world. And I'm not talking about those that this is your job. I'm talking about those that, you know what I mean, those that actually have someone ailing in their home or someone who just needs uh, pretty much full-time care in the home. You cannot give them your best if you're dead on your feet and you're tired and you just cannot even think half the time. And there are so many programs out here that you can um, seek out and get care. There's there's all kind of, um, you know, part time care that can come in and simply just give the family members a break so that they can go do whatever they need to do. OK, even if you're running up to the hospital, if they're not in your specific home and you're running up to the hospital all the time. Listen, ask someone else, hey, can you go up today and see mom, you know, and with technology today. Tell somebody, hey, can you run up to see mom or dad or whomever today for me? I really just I just I just need to rest. I need for whatever your reason is. It's your you, you make no apologies for it and tell them download some of these applications so you can physically see them and they can see you if it's going to eat away at you and you feel like you're letting them down because you're not right in front of them. Or even if you do invite somebody into the house, another caregiver from an agency or whatever the case is, and hey, listen, you know, can you, do you mind if you download this app and just let her and him or them see me and so I can talk to them and, and you know, what have you? That will work wonders to release yourself of the guilt. And just knowing that you can, if you need, if you want to, check in on them. Okay? And the person doesn't, if it's, if it's just going back to the scenario with the hospital, if, they need if, if they just go up there for a couple minutes, you would be surprised at just knowing that they are there physically in place of you physically so that you can regroup and recharge. You will be so surprised how freeing and relieving that is for you and how much more refreshed you'll be when you do go back up there. The last point that I'm going to put this uh, this notepad down is. It's not always because. You're being selfish because it's it's an activity that you don't want to endure or whatever the case is. Sometimes we just need to be by ourselves. You know, um, sometimes you want to go to the store by yourself. Sometimes you don't feel like driving across town to pick them up, take them to Walmart, wherever you're going and lug their baggage and whatever the case is. And you know, sometimes you just want to get in and out of somewhere. Sometimes you just want to handle your household your bills, your whatever the case is, sometimes you just need to do nothing at all. <laughs> sometimes you just need to do nothing at all. Sometimes it's to catch up on that series that you've been wanting to catch up on. Read that book you've been wanting to read. Get to that baking sale that you wanted to, you know, submit an entry into or whatever it is. I can't come up with all, <laughs> all the examples. but <laughs> Sometimes, and like I said, sometimes it's just to sleep a little longer, okay? We are so deprived of sleep, ladies and gentlemen. We really, truly are. And like I said, if you're running down and running down and running down, how present are you really? You're, you're just a walking zombie. And so many of us are literally walking through this life, missing everything because we are running ourselves into the ground. OK, so it's it's so pivotal. It is just I can't stress this enough. It really is self-preservation, not selfishness. I promise you it is. And there's such a freedom in it. And let me go back to another point. I promise you on everything I know and love, if you say no, they will be okay. This world will not crash and burn and disintegrate because you decided that you didn't feel like going today. You weren't going to go pick them up and run them around today. And the funny thing about it, <laughs> 
not even really funny but the the sad thing about it a lot of times is you don't have anything to do but what you they need you to do for them and there goes your day your hour your lunch break or whatever for you because sometimes life just what it it, it is what it is you know our schedules are just hectic sometimes our nine to five schedule our day to day is is simply hectic in itself and the moment you really have is your little 30 minute lunch break to go sit in the car or walk around the office building or whatever it is that you you know would love to do on your lunch or catch up with coworkers or make that phone call and catch up with so-and-so and plan a, a, a lunch out or whatever the case is that little bit of time is all you have and if you're tending to somebody else or you know those of us that can leave work and do things and if you're running around and this is just one example if you're running around for everybody else during your little bit of time that you barely have as it is how fair is that to you as a person? How fair is that of them to expect that from you? Because let's get into this. You and I both know, we all know that the more and more that you run and you become dependent upon, it becomes expected. It's no longer a favor. A can you? Do you mind? It's, oh, you can't da 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 da. Excuse me? <laughs> it becomes expectant. And then therefore, here comes the guilt. Well, I guess I'll find a way. Yep, you sure will. You, yep, you will. Sorry, not sorry. You will. People are naturally resourceful creatures. We all have the same opportunities out here, okay? Everybody comes from a different path and there's other hurdles. Some of us have to climb five rocks. Some of us have to climb 20. Some of us get past the 20 and we got to climb 15 more. I mean, everybody has their own levels of progress in their life, but the choices and the opportunities out here, we are all, we, listen, no one is exempt from life. No one has it easy out here last time I checked. Not, not the majority of us. I'm not talking about silver spoon people, okay? And look, some of them, you'd be surprised. Anyway, because we're all dealing with life, okay? People are naturally resourceful. They will find a way. If it's important to them, if they know if they don't get to work today, they'll lose their job and it's your day off and you get ready to go run them and you don't... You don't even want to be in the same city as your job today. Guess what? They will make it there. <laughs> they will do what if it's important or they will wait until you can. OK, and enough no's will turn into, you know what? I can't keep on asking them. They're going to keep. I, I got to find out what I got to do. I got it. I can't. It will. It will push them. And that's what's best for them. A lot of times. That, that you not being accessible and available will push them and force them into self-reliance. And you'll be so much happier for it. Also, people need boundaries. You don't set them, they, won't, they will not. No one is going to take offense and put it around themselves for you. And saying no will definitely set the boundaries. And it goes back into what I just was saying previously. It will force them to be self-reliant. The world will not crash and burn. I promise you, the world is not going to crash and burn. When this world ends, it's not going to be because one of us told somebody no. Well, that's not getting to war and all that. <laughs> it's not going to be because you didn't run your friend to Walmart. How's that? <laughs> it's not going to be because you decided to call an agency and to take care of mom or dad or whomever the, the, the person is that you're taking care of. Two out of the seven days a week, you know, 365, 24 seven that you're doing. So if you, you, it's not going to, I promise you. And you'll be so much better for it. And the person that you love and care about, they will be okay. They will be much better for it. Especially your children, mothers and fathers, please. Especially your children. Because the problem is when you're a blessing to someone, sometimes in blessings, can turn into expectancy and we have got to stop. So learn that no is not a cuss word. Be selfish with yourself, it is okay. Be selfish with your time. Be selfish with the little bit of time that you sometimes have. And I promise you those people, you know, it'll be beneficial to you as well because you will weed out those people that are draining the life out of you and you will have so much more time because they'll drop themselves off, honey, of your circle. And some of them need to drop on off. Some of them are ticks that really do need to get all the, get, this is the last ounce of inch of blood you're getting from me and you about to drop up off of here because I'm about to put collar on myself. <laughs> Sorry if that's offensive to some people. <laughs> but yeah, you need, you need these folks to drop themselves up off of you. You really do. And you will be so much better for it. But also you'll identify your true blues. You will identify those people that 
they'll say, you know what, go ahead, you know, we'll catch you on the next time, no problem at all. Or don't even call back and check on you. Hey, how was your you day? How are you today? Do you need me to come? You know, hey, listen, I'm, do you need me to, are you all right? Do you need me to drop by and, and bring you anything or what have you? Do you want me to take over? You know, I, you know, they will, they will be the ones that, okay, this is not, you know, an expectancy. This is just somebody that really truly is grateful and feels blessed that I'm doing these things and I'm there in their corner and I'm, and I'm doing this for them. So that's pretty much it today. Um, I wanted to give an example about my daughter. I had to teach my oldest this situation because, excuse me, sorry. Whew, she had a girlfriend who lived across state lines, actually. And she would constantly call my daughter to run her ragged and run her around and just get her out the house because her circumstance wasn't ideal. My daughter is 25 years old, has her own place, a dependable vehicle now works full time and is working on her is about to get her bachelor's working in, um, in school full time and getting ready to go right into her master's full time. And I am my baby girl is the epitome of what I'm talking about now. She tends to run for everybody but herself. She has no children. She ha doesn't even have any pets. And sometimes it is more of, um, of, a, of a surprise if she's home by herself or not on the road when I talk to her, which is quite often. And so I had to let her know, you got to tell this young lady that you just can't do it. You don't even have to give an excuse. And she did guilt trip her. And I told, and listen, the mother and me wanted to go and get in my car and help her out. Trust me. But you got to let them learn. Like I too still have to, I struggle with this as well, especially with my children. Are you kidding me? Oh, stepping back and letting them find their way. Oh, my husband had to, you know, pretty much bear hug me a couple times through these years. Like, mm -mm, let them go. OK, so in closing, and I'm sorry this video is so long. I was trying to shorten these videos, but this is something that really I just I, I pray this is this has to this has to be this, this has to be said. No is not a cuss word. I'm giving you full and total permission to be selfish with yourself. I'm almost begging you to so that you don't drain out and pass out and fall out. Be OK, get comfortable with it. The more you do it, the better at it you'll become. As always, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. All of the information will be down below. If you have any questions or concerns or if you need some advice or you have a content idea that you want to share privately and not down in the comments below, feel free to email me at lenaspearls4 at gmail.com. That information will be down below. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really do appreciate it. Till next time.